right, hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Down Home Backyard Gardening. Now, today I wanna to talk about this problem right here, and that's Grazon. How many of y'all know what Grazon is, why it's bad for our gardens, and how we can fix it or get rid of it if we get contaminated with it? If you don't know the answers to any of those questions, sit back, relax, take some notes, and let's learn together. Okay, so right off the bat, what is Grazon? Well, Grazon is this right here. Now, as you can see, this is a herbicide that affects broadleaf plants or weeds. And that is why big agriculture uses this poison in their fields for like hay, straw, wheat, those kind of plants, because those plants aren't affected by the Grazon because they don't have broad leaves. The problem for you and me is pretty much everything that we grow in the garden is a broadleafed plant. Tomatoes, peppers, squash, zucchini, melons, beans, peas, you name it, pretty much that's what we grow. So if we get contaminated with it, our beds are pretty much done for quite a while, which I'll get into in just a minute. But the question is, is why do they use a poison like that in their fields, knowing that it's going to affect our gardens well the answer is really simple it all comes down to money what they're going to do is they're going to make a profit off the cow manure because when the cows eat the contaminated hay or straw it goes right through them and does not affect them at all it is completely safe for cattle so once the cattle eats the contaminated straw or hay and they pass it out then it gets sold as cow manure problem is is they don't always tell us or label it that it's contaminated with grazon so then you buy it thinking hey great i've got some good cow manure i'm going to amend my beds i'm going to fertilize we're going to be ready for the next growing season and <laughs> your beds are absolutely contaminated at that point now that we know what grazon is how do we know if we've been contaminated with it if your leaves start to look like these pictures right here, there's probably a 99% chance you have probably been contaminated with Grazon. Because what you're looking for are leaves that start to just look not right, twisted in on themselves, uh, elongated, just not right. And or if your plants all start dying, especially if you have planted broad leafed plants. There is a simple test that you can do to find out whether or not you have a Grazon problem in your garden. Now, I did a video on this last year, a simple way to test your cow manure, and I'll put a link to that right here. But to be really quick about it and not to go into everything that I did, that I talked about in that video, here's what you're basically doing. You're gonna take a little bit of that material, that cow manure, that compost, because compost can also be contaminated with Grazon. You're gonna plant two pepper seeds and you're going to plant two tomato seeds in the same little bowl and what you're looking for are those plants to grow one two you're looking for the first or and and or second set of true leaves not the first leaves that grow those are basically the the seeds opening up from the for, for the plant what you're looking for are the true leaves the leaves that look like an actual the plant's actual leaves if you get one to two sets of those leaves growing on those on all four of those plants and they look normal healthy then you do not have a grazon problem if all the plants grow and then die right away if they grow and the true leaves start to twist and get all gnarly and crazy looking you've got grazon do not use that product get rid of it throw it away don't put it anywhere in your yard, your flower beds, nothing. Just get rid of it. I think it's a lot better to test your manure or your compost and risk that seven, eight bucks or whatever the bag of material costs as opposed to losing a bed for a season to two or three. Okay, so how can we avoid having a Grazon problem? It, it's really simple. You do the test or you do a lot of research on the company that you bought the material from. I'm not talking about Home Depot or Lowe's or Ace or you know Menards or any of those 
hardware stores or nurseries. I'm talking about the company that produced the material. Research those companies and, and do your due diligence to make sure that you understand what their practices are. For me, all the material that I use here in my garden, I used to actually work for the company that I, use, that I get all the material from, all the compost and mulch and soils and everything. So I know their practice very well. But not everyone has that opportunity to have that experience or that knowledge of a company. So that's why I'm saying be very, very diligent if you are going to go get a commercially sold compost or cow manure. Now, if you know someone who has these kind of materials like on their farms or whatever, and you know that the hay that they feed their, to their cattle is a safe hay, then I would use it. But to be completely honest, what I do, I always test. I spend the two weeks of growing the two seeds or the two plants, the four seeds, and I test to see what happens. I just think it's a lot better, like I said earlier, to take the extra time, spend that money on that one bag and find out if it's worth it or not. Okay, so the worst case scenario has happened. You've already laid out the compost or the cow manure in your beds you're excited and then you see this video and you're like, oh no, <laughs> oh no, what do I do? Okay, do the test. If the test comes back positive for Grazon contamination, you need to act incredibly quickly because once that poison is in your soil, it's in your soil. The half-life on this poison is between 30 days to a year and a half. Now, of course, they throw the 30 days thing out there to make people not so freaked out but the year and a half should scare the living snot out of everybody because that's the half-life which means the full life would be about three years here's what you need to do before we start freaking out how long have you had that material in your bed if it's not very long then you have a chance of getting it out quickly first thing you do immediately is you get the material off the soil if it was compost or cow manure scrape it up throw it away do not compost it throw it away then what I would do is, and everything that I've read and researched, you go th one to three, maybe four inches down in your soil and you get rid of all that soil. I know that sucks, especially if you have a raised bed, because that might be half your bed, but you've got to get rid of it. So throw it away. Again, don't compost it. Throw that tainted material away. Then what you can do is do a test. Do the same test that you do for the cow manure, but with the soil four inches down or however far down you went. Test that soil. If the plants grow and they're healthy, then you probably dodged a really big bullet and you might have a really safe area right there. If they come out all gnarly and, and you know misshaped and uh, disfigured the leaves, then you gotta get rid of it. Go deeper. If you have to take that entire bed out, take it out and start over. Now there are a couple tricks you can do. You can use activated charcoal, sprinkle it on the top of the surface of that bed and just let it do its thing. You might be able to till it in a little bit, um, get it into the, into the soil to pull the graze on out, but it's also going to take out all of your nutrients in that bed. Um, another trick you can do is plant like corn. Graze on's not going to affect that plant. So plant corn in that bed and let the corn also help soak and suck out um, that graze on from the material from your beds once you do that though be sure to throw away those stocks do not compost them because graze on are now in those stocks but that's another way that you can help get rid of the graze on quicker now to be completely honest if you get graze on contamination you very well might have lost that bed for a season or two or three I watched another youtuber video last year which gave me the idea of doing the compost test um, from watching his video because I thought it was such an important thing to put out there to as many people as possible because again we as gardeners should be helping each other and that's what I like to do here on this channel is I want to help and, and teach and share everything that I know and I learn and my failures and successes so when I saw that video I had to immediately do a video based off of his video and I did let him know that I was doing that and he gave me the full approval of doing that video. He lost his bed 
for I think he said a year and a half or two years, one entire bed. That was a third of his gardening. So it's very, very important to do the test on the cow manure or the compost to ensure that you don't get grazon contamination in your garden. All right, everyone, that is the video. I hope it was super helpful. I hope and I pray that you all have not been contaminated with Grazon. Okay, so the reason I did this video isn't because I got contaminated with Grazon. It's because a subscriber commented on my community tab asking a question about Grazon. And I decided to do a lot of research on this topic and acknowledge her question, answer her question. But I also wanted to throw this out to everyone because it's been on my mind. This Grazon question has been bothering me for... Uh, about a week so I wanted to do a video on this and again I really truly hope it was helpful I hope that you're able to take this knowledge and share it share the video with as many people that do gardening that you know hey, if we are able to save just one garden by sharing this video or this knowledge or any videos on YouTube about Grazon with our friends who are getting new that are new to gardening or um, thinking about gardening. This is part of the prep that you should know before you get into this journey of gardening. It could very well save a garden. And if you have just one garden, then it'll, if you can save that one garden, then hey, great. That I'm beyond happy. So if you have not subscribed to this channel, please consider doing so. Just hit that little icon in the bottom right corner. Hit the bell so you're always notified. And then also go over to FarmersDefense.com. This is a company that supplies and makes amazing gardening apparel. Cool, cool Wiccan sleeves that actually cool your arm when you're sweating. Uh, all the apparels, aprons, pruners, hats, straw hats, you name it, they make it. And right now in October, they have a special line of Defeat Breast Cancer sleeves out. 10% of the profits off of those specific sleeves are going back to Susan G. Coleman. So go over there, check them out. In checkout, type in Backyard 10, save you some extra cash right there. All right, everyone, so as always, thank you for your support. Please share this video. I'd, I'd really, really appreciate it. Again, the mission is to just save one or as many gardens as we can from this terrible, terrible, terrible poison. So until next time, shine bright and harvest hard.